Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Video 12. Picking up from last video, let's look at Gauss quadrature with n equals to 2. So this means we will have um, three nodes, and we denote them by x0, x1, x2, and three associated weights with it. So my rule would look like this. The integral of f over negative 1 to 1 will equal to a0 f at x0 plus a1 f at x1 plus a2 f at x2. Now, since the total number of unknown here is 6, this means the rule should give exact solution for polynomials of degree less than or equal to 5. So the degree of precision m equals to 5 here. We will take advantage of the symmetry property. That is, um, everything shall be symmetric about 0, which means x1 shall be negative value and it will be exactly negative of x2 and x1 the middle one must lie on the origin 0 and the weights on x0 and x2 shall be the same. Due to these symmetrical property then we already know if fx equals to x to the power of some number that is the odd number and the rule will be automatically exact for all those. Therefore, we only need to check fx equals to x to the even power that is less than or equal to 5, which means we need to check fx equal to 1, x squared, and x to the fourth. So let's start with fx equal to 1. So if it's 1, then I will just get a0 plus a1 plus a2. And since a2 equals to a0, this is 2, a0 plus a2. And the integral of 1 equals to 2, same as last time. Then, if f equals to x squared, then we would use the fact that x1 must be 0. So f at 0 must be 0 because 0 squared. So I only have those two terms, and they are symmetric. So they shall give me the same thing. So I basically need to check only one term, that is a0, and then x0 squared, and this shall be multiplied by 2 because I have two of the same. And that shall equal to the integral of x squared over that, which is 2 third. Finally, f equal to x to the power 4. And again, by using the symmetry, we only will have... Um, twice of this expression here because this will equal to that and this will be 0. So that will give me 2a0 and x0 to the power 4. This is f at x0, right? And then integrating x to the 4 from negative 1 to 1, the left-hand side, this will give me 2 over 5. Now we see we have three equations for three unknowns. The reduced unknowns are x0, and a0 and a1, so three of them. And we can easily see we can solve it. For example, if you take here the third equation and divide it by the second equation, you immediately get x0 squared equal to 5 over 3, which gives you the answer for x0, and then at the same time they give you the answer for x2, and then you can use that to find a0 and then a1. Okay, so here are the answers. So x0 is square root of 3 over 5, and x1 is 0, x2 is negative square root of 3 over 5. And then I have these weights for the point um, x0 and x2, and this is the weight for the point x1. Plugging these informations in, I can write out my Gaussian quadrature. And it's just this expression here. I rewrite it down with the numbers that we have found for the AIs and the XIs. So that's your quadrature rule. And I took out the common factor 1 over 9, so I don't have to write fractions. So I have all whole numbers in here. And this Gaussian quadrature is exact for all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 5. And that is a very high degree, especially we only used three points. 
similar computations can be carried out to derive、um, Gaussian quadratures with more nodes. So here's a table for it. And with one point, two points, three points, and four points, and five points. Okay, and very often these、um, can be just coded once in the code and just be used it over and over. And these numbers are derived exactly following the same principle as we did for the case of three points here. Now let's look at what one should do if we have a general interval. Let's say from A to B. What you can do is just a linear transformation. You rescale it and then you shift it. So the transformation is the following: If I relate a variable t and x in this form, t equals to two x minus a plus b over b minus a, which is where、well, you could solve this equation. For x and write x in terms of t, and this is what you would get, and then you can verify that for t lies between negative one and one, the x here will lie exactly between a and b. Well, this claim can be easily verified because this is a linear transformation. You see, x is a linear function of t, so all you need to do is to verify that it holds at the two ends. So let's see. If t equals to negative one, what is my x? If we see that x exactly equals to a, and when t is one, and we see that x exactly equals to b. Okay. So、um, what one should do would be、um, from the table of the Gaussian quadrature, all the nodes will be now denoted by t i, and the Actual nodes for your quadrature on the interval from A to B will be computed. For each ti, you plug in, and you will find a corresponding xi. And also, the weights ai's shall be multiplied by a factor of b minus a over two. Okay, so some pretty obvious advantages of、uh, using the Gaussian quadrature. Is that exactly? It has very higher accuracy and using fewer nodes. And also, a second one might not be too obvious at this stage. That is, all the nodes being chosen here are actually in the interior of the interval. So, these formulas would allow us to、um, find numerical integrations to functions that tend to infinity at one end of the interval. And provided, of course, the whole integral is defined and is finite. So in that case, the trapezoid rule and the Simpson's rule get into trouble because you cannot evaluate the function at the end; it's infinite. But using the Gaussian quadrature, you can do it. Okay. So hope you enjoyed it, and see you next chapter.